Hi, Raksha. How's it going? Hi. Good. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? All good. What have you been up to? Where are you now? So, Where are you? Uh, I'm in Pune. Um, mm-hmm. Been trying to quarantine life as best as I can. Right. Um, and that's pretty much what I've been up to. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. trying to life in quarantine. Mm-hmm. That's great. So um, we're here to talk about your golf career. Yes. I haven't talked about that in a while. <laughs> All right. So, um, let me ask you how you got started with golf. How did you? So, I come from a family of sports people. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom was a former India number one in tennis during her time. Oh wow! Um, so was my aunt. So my aunt played tennis for Duke. So I come from a sporting background. Mm-hmm. So sports was like always part of my life growing up. So I started with tennis, I started swimming at the age of three, four, so all into sports. And I guess somewhere along the way, I realized I don't like running. So I think God. Mm-hmm. So what age did you get started with? Mm, so I started playing seriously, like competing and practicing and all when I was around 12. Mm-hmm. And okay. probably introduced to the game around nine, but I was also playing tennis at that time seriously. So um, was kind of doing two games, figuring what I like. So did tennis help with golf? Like, did you feel you had like? For golf? sure. Mm-hmm. Um, in a way, I guess it's good if you start um, any kind of hand-eye coordination or any kind of sport game um, because I feel like that just makes it easier for any other sport so today if I want to play TT I can do that if I want to play badminton I can do that although I'm, I've never been formally trained because you just have that hand-eye coordination with any sport so definitely made things easier mm-hmm. yeah. so um, yeah so you start going pro or starting taking it seriously at the age of 12 what do you do then? Like, where do you go from there? Do you start competing and stuff all over India? Yeah, yeah so I started playing on the national tour uh, when I was 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually, I guess, as you play more tournaments, you rack up points. Like, that's how the system works. And then you're ranked in order of merit. So right. you have, like, your juniors ranking, your amateur ranking, and then they usually take the top three or top four to play for the country. Mm-hmm. And then that's how I got into that. So my first ever tournament for India was in France. And I was 13. I got lost on a bus. It was crazy. So much fun. But, um, yeah. And then you kind of go into playing for your country for a little bit. And then my next step was going to college. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um before we go to your college, um, tell us some of uh, tell us about some of your uh, wins and uh, titles. One second, go. Um, so probably my most special victory was um, in Bangalore. Uh, this was probably this was in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also actually my first win in India Um, because the season before that I was runner-up for 12 tournaments in a row so I went through that (laughs) phase where I was constantly number two like it was how like number two spot is taken by me (laughs) so that's what happened for a full season Mm -hmm. and then I won this and it was actually a professional event so I was competing as an amateur Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually I was here on holiday in India and from college and I decided to go because I have a lot of friends in Bangalore. I wanted to just like chill, have a good time, play yeah. some golf. I hadn't touched my golf clubs in a month. So mm. really went in with zero expectations. And it was just a blast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was I it was so e- I remember it feeling like my easiest golfing experience and also mm. I ended up winning it. Maybe it has something to do with each other, but yeah, fondest memory. Wow. And uh, wonderful. What about India? 
what was it like re- representing india at such a young age um honestly if you ask me now my answer would be different than what it was 6 years ago mm-hmm. i don't think i appreciated it enough when mm-hmm. i had it right. um you know as athletes we're always going for one more or one tier higher and you right. know this one is above me we are always competing you can always get better right, and right. something that they see is like if you think this is all you've got your your career is probably over. like if you feel like you have no scope for improvement you should probably quit right. so i would i appreciate it now though mm-hmm. <laughs> but back then i was just like yeah this is what i deserve this is what i've been working for like i deserve this <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah wonderful where were you training in uh, pune so i trained in pune club okay um i never had a proper coach i trained with my dad mm-hmm. um yeah great great um tell us what has yeah. golf taught you sorry i didn't catch that what what has golf taught you oh god um many 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 things <laughs> um okay i'll just i'll go with my top top 3 things mm-hmm. um perspective um there's always a lot of solutions to a problem mm-hmm. and i feel like what you eventually end up with is what path you take which is what golf is about there you can do so many things out there but what are you going to do what's going to be beneficial for you how are you going to cut your losses so definitely perspective um patience um it's a long game it's a tiring game um patience and persistence because you re- you feel like there's many days i felt like burying myself in becoming a tree or something on the golf course and mm-hmm. it's you just have to persist like we would have probably 36 holes of competition rounds um during college golf which is not heard of where we were competing for probably 14 hours in a day to the highest level which takes a lot out of you mm-hmm. um and plus i guess injuries generally as a sportsman like recovering through injuries just teaches you that that you have to persist above it all be above it all so yeah right. my top 3 or 4 things mm-hmm. right so um yeah college tennis i'm fuck i forgot this off <laughs> college golf tell us about college golf when did you go to the states how did you get there how did you end up there why did you end up there okay so my college golf story is a funny one mm-hmm. <laughs> so i actually uh, competed in this tournament called the world juniors uh, which happens in san diego every year so basically the top juniors all over the world go there to be recruited by like division 1 coaches the coaches come out there to watch they get a chance to talk to the players to the parents you know offer scholarships what have you um and there's a lot of kids that go for that tournament but after two days there's a cut off so i don't know how to explain it but generally you add up your calculations for two days and the lowest say 30 get to move forward mm-hmm. and the coaches only go for the last two days they don't really want to see the whole field and i made the cut off by one shot and i was the first indian to ever do that so again zero expectations walked in there i was like yeah i'm in san diego i get to play tiger woods golf course story finds like let's have fun but mm-hmm. yeah it turned into something serious mm-hmm. yeah. and i got to talk to a lot of coaches and i was actually talking to a few coaches before that tournament too but i ended up signing with a school that i had not even looked at just because i really loved the coach um so i finished all the sats and everything you given your applications you get a bunch of offers so i actually dropped an ivy league to go into kent state university which now that i look back sounds crazy because it was wow wow okay that's okay so you were saying you were getting offers from uh, colleges in ivy league yeah like i saw i saw six universities 
all mm. coasts, all divisions. I uh, couldn't make up my mind, and then I met this coach at Kent State, and he was. I'd never had a coach before, so I knew I wanted to go into a team where I would have that foundation. Mm-hmm. And he just seemed like such a solid guy that I was like sold. <laughs> But uh, he ended up getting fired before I actually joined, so <laughs> that was great. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Serious out. Sorry. Serious out. Mhm. And um, you you went through on a full scholarship, right? Yes, I did. So was that uh, because you represented India, or uh, uh, I mean, to the new golfers around town what is the cut off like can anyone get a like get like a good scholarship to go to the us or was it i mean do you really need to be at the top 3 5 so it it kind of depends i feel like what you're looking for mm-hmm. um for me i knew i wanted to turn professional which is why i chose a division 1 they have three divisions right for right, sports too right. So someone like my brother who knew that he wanted to study and play sports he chose a division 3 because that was better fit. it mm-hmm. was a better fit for him right. um so it really depends what you're looking for but um the process and the way it works at least for if you are a top athlete in your sport um in your country was let's say and you're looking to play seriously and professionally um you can actually sign up on a few sites um that i'll share with sarthak later and um, you can start emailing coaches your portfolio mm-hmm. so you can directly talk to these coaches and email them say your swing or uh, statistics from your previous seasons or uh, what you're interested in doing or why you play the sport, sport you play and based on all this the, some coaches will get back to you saying hey my roster is full because generally they recruit a year or year and a half in advance mm-hmm. so you kind of have to be at least a year into the before you go to college you have to start getting on communicating with the coaches right. so yeah that's how i started i just sent out pro- probably 500 emails um right. so yeah Mhm. Um before uh, we move ahead to uh, American I mean your experience in America uh, what were you doing with your studies in Pune how was it like were you keeping up with it or were you just focused on golf on golf so um I enjoyed school I was a good student uh, I was I never I mean, I'm going to sound terrible for saying this but I didn't give a single exam in 9th or 11th standard like luckily my school supported me a lot right. um they let me give like the few main exams so 9th standard I only gave my finals mm-hmm. but like that was enough cuz I got 90 like people know I can do it like <laughs> it's okay but my school was awesome like I would not have been able to do it without symbiosis at all like mm-hmm. they were super supportive through everything that I was doing and they just went out of their way to make sure that my education was taken care of and so did Ferguson for that matter like they really supported everything that I was doing for twice they were great wonderful and I did art in Ferguson and I was actually interested in science but I was never good in math so that was not never an option for me. Right. Wonderful. That's good to know. Like Pune actually I mean since Pune has a sporting culture compared to other states in India I mean this yeah. support a lot more. But I about that though like I never got my 5% that the SSC board promised me. like oh. they asked me i showed them my like certificate for indian golf and they asked me for my zd level certificate right. and that was really disappointing but i think they changed that after because my brother got the 5% and i know five other juniors did but i really really broke up back going to every office in pune <laughs> trying to make sure this happens but yeah so i mean that's the thing right uh, uh no matter how good you are even if you're like india number 1 you have to participate in that Uh, you know district tournaments and uh, states and stuff like that to be eligible for the 5% uh, not really no you don't it's just that they didn't recognize golf <laughs> i mean they gave 5% for zd level handball question mark 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, actually there are like few, uh, you know, people like during my college days, they were like, you know, just joining a random sport like that, just so that they can, you know, get the 5%. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Ring tennis, that was another one. <laughs> Ring tennis. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, America, how was your experience? Um, in terms of golf, great because I got to literally go to every state in America and play golf. Like, it was amazing. I got to travel everywhere. Like we went from Vegas to Hawaii and it was wild that way. But in terms of um, like if I improved, I don't know because like I said, my college experience is a little different because in four years, I went through four college golf coaches, which usually never happens. So, okay. mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's some of the risk in, uh, you know, deciding to study golf. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, even I had a friend of mine, like I was telling you before this, so um, he got into a, like a pretty good college and because of a coach and um, mm-hmm. something happened or whatever and uh, the coaches changed and then he wasn't even in the team. So, because coaches have their own, you know, priorities and ideas and then you have to wait, wait it out and stuff. So, uh, what, what was your experience? Like, didn't you like gel with the coach or what is it like? So, the coach that I went to uni for was fired before I uh, joined. So, mm-hmm. the coach that I actually played for in the university had never, he hadn't recruited me. So, I wasn't his recruit. I wasn't his recruit and yeah. also he was quite racist so I ended up transferring after two years actually because he gave me a very very tough time so um, it's like to a point where you kind of like if your mentor or someone is telling you you're not giving a hundred percent but you're giving a hundred percent then you break yourself kind of give that extra one percent that's just not there which is essentially what happened he would drop me out of tournaments because I was getting a B in a class whereas there were two other people on my team getting C's in their class and they were going for tournaments so stupid things like this or like if I was late by one minute to a workout or meeting he -hmm. would make the whole team do do a punishment but make me watch so just extreme reactions like this mm-hmm. which gave me a very tough time for two years um, but also I guess the most improving years in my golf was we worked really really hard we had workouts at 5 o'clock in the morning we had classes from 7 to 2 we had practice from 2 to 6 we had classes again from 6 to 8 we had study hall from 8 to 9 because as athletes you have to keep up your GPA right. so it was a rough two years and I transferred universities and then my coach there was awesome. I really, really liked him. We won conference that year. Um, I came in second place in conference that year. It was my lowest scoring average ever, like a great year overall. And then our athletic directors who are one step up above the coaches, they kind of control all the coaching staff. Um, they didn't want to give him... Um, a raise because mm-hmm. uh, although he I mean clearly had it coming since we won conference but he got a better offer from another university and he left so then we had another coach come in so that was my fourth coach mm-hmm. um, and she was also great but I only had her for one year yeah. so I never really got to make that bond with mm-hmm. one coach as they say mm-hmm. right that uh, obviously would have created you know trouble especially when you know you're you're alone over there, right? I mean, you don't have your support system with you. So that's tough. Yeah, but lucky for us, like, we go in with a sporting family, right? So I I always had that support from my fellow golfers, whoever it was, like, um, Mm -hmm. definitely. It's Mm -hmm. it's better for us than someone individually going because we go in with a whole team that we're going to be introduced to and know, like, essentially, you just go in knowing you're going to make friends. Mm-hmm. So right. that was never being alone was never the tough part. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you get to uh, you know like when you mentioned um, the coach was uh, you know a bit racist towards you? 
uh, do you get to train alone by yourself do you get to work on your own or do you always need i mean is there like a restriction and stuff like that um, there's no restriction you it really depends for golf um the practice facilities a lot of space so if the university has it and it's like close to you you always have the option of going whenever scheduled times are not yeah. there like you know you have your own locker room it's like any other sport Okay. but for uh, universities where you have to travel say 10 15 minutes and you don't have a car then you are reliant on your teammates to pick you up for practice so if they want to go out of time and you can find like there's no restriction as such right mm-hmm. um apart from that uh, the your i mean compared to compared to the other sports uh, how are your golf teammates athletes like how are they are they like uh you know reserved i mean coming from i mean reserved in the sense lot more focused on golf i mean compared to other sports where they go out partying or in a club or that or what do you guys do what do you guys do i mean it's something similar as well sorry do you have something similar as well i mean yeah we are like it's it's really honestly how they show it in the movies it's like a community you have your frat and sororities you have your athletes and then you have the students and the mm-hmm. mass population and that's mm-hmm. honestly exactly as it was um we definitely had parties it wasn't like we were more serious or anything but mm-hmm. we would definitely mingle only within the athlete crowd i don't know why that was a thing so we would be like going to the basketball house or the tennis house or something mm-hmm. like that but it was it was a good it was a good vibe mhm great um back to india tell us do you think people can make it i mean there have been a lot of i mean players i mean who have made it but golfers starting off now can they make it just training in india definitely 100% mhm us is not like uh something that you have to do to be able to make it it's not it's just not even a 50 50 thing i mean um in terms of exposure and experience like sure they should even if you are training in india it doesn't limit you to traveling abroad for tournaments or matches and mm-hmm. that should definitely happen because you need to experience a different caliber and a different kind of um way to train uh mm-hmm. there are a little more sorted for so the way they train and kind of um coach and mentor is a lot more solid i feel than what we have in india right now it's a little too scattered um so for exposure definitely go everywhere and play like thailand doesn't even have to be america like even asia there's so many different um i guess institutions which have super talented kids so india is just a small pool so if you're thinking of making it big definitely go out but you can train here <laughs> like we have everything we need here okay great so that's probably i mean great in golf uh, because in uh, probably other sport uh, the facilities like let's say tennis or whatever i mean they have a lot more um, tech products lot of different st- you know uh, training uh products abroad that, as compared to india so it's great that you know in golf everything is the same abroad i mean almost apart from the scattered part of it i'm technology wise we're definitely behind i'm not saying that golf is here in india technologically it's not there yet like they're definitely superior in terms of training facilities and okay. everything but it's nothing that we can't get here again with any other sport all the equipment it's you can easily have it sent here mm-hmm. through you know family or anything like it's yeah. not a big but in terms of training centers yeah they're well better off but they also have more money Mm-hmm. they have that much money to put into these things whereas i feel like we don't really right. um but yeah it's not i'm not saying it's the same it's definitely mm-hmm. not the same in just in terms of i guess what i was talking about in terms mm-hmm. of talent or hard work or right. um experience i think we have it all you know technology we still have some time to go right 
Uh, what about coaching expertise? Sorry? Coaching expertise in India, how is it? I mean, there's definitely a few great coaches in India. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Uh, why are some people not taking up golf? I mean, what are some of the common reasons? Like, yeah, um, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very time consuming. Very time consuming. So, what would be a regular three-hour practice session in tennis would be six or seven hours in golf. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and really, pretty much deciding to take it up professionally, it becomes your life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the top, I think two reasons are it's extremely time consuming and it's really expensive. All right. All right. Focus and concentration. Tell us more about what do you do to have that? Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. um, in life or in golf? In golf and in life, both. Okay, okay, so I'll tell you about the closest focus tool I've used, okay? Mm -hmm. It was really mad. We don't have that here in India. <laughs> I don't know when we'll get it. But yeah. it was really cool. So there are these, um, you heard of those bone induction headphones? Um, is it something like a VR? Or is it no, it's basically like both created these sunglasses where if you put them on you can hear music through vibrations sent through the bones so you don't have to put anything in your ear to hear the music mm -hmm. okay so we used to have the bone induction headgear which used to play music into our head while mm -hmm. we were practicing it, we had to pick one song that made us calm and for golf the important thing is having the right um, heart rate so that, you know, your muscles are not tense, you're in the moment, like it's important. So the music would actually stop once your heart rate was optimal. That was our practice. Wow. To see how much we could practice without the music start, starting again, which was oh, never more than a minute. Mm -hmm. So that was my coolest like focus technique. It kind of taught me a lot about myself, um, what makes me hyper, what makes me down, what I need to do to kind of just bring myself back to the moment. So that was the coolest one. And in terms of other things used for focus, um, honestly, just regular, you know, nothing, nothing great. Um, right. So you have the stuff like, uh, you know, uh, meditation and uh, pranayama and all that. Did you, like the breathing exercise, well, you do that as well? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did that when I competed. I don't do that anymore, although I should. Um, we used to do a lot of visualization. That was another important thing. More than focusing, uh, we did visualization the day before the round. So we used to always get a practice round on the course that we were playing. Right. And obviously you map out what you want to do for the next day, You know where your troubles are. You kind of do a whole map of the scene. And at night, um, one of the things that I used to do was just close my eyes and visualize each shot that I was going to play the next day. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like that kind of, um, so your body kind of believes that you've done it if you imagine to have done it, or uh, yeah. that it makes any sense. Every time I got to that spot on the actual day, um, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I've done this before. So that helped me. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Um, ideal age for ideal age to get started anytime you can pick up a club yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> like it should be fun okay so you don't Please you don't need to be like you don't need to start at like three or something to uh, make it big no. whenever not at all. In fact, when I started playing when like for fun as a nine year old, I remember all of us we after half an hour we used to get so bored, but someone used to have a football, so we used to go out on the golf course and just play for fun. So there's no like age to start seriously. You just have to enjoy the atmosphere 
um and just make it your comfort zone i guess so as early as you can mm-hmm. uh, what is a day in the life of a golfer like do you um in india or in abroad like what fitness routines do you have compared to other sports like is it something different is it more mental or do you have like you know a lot of physical stuff as well so we do do a lot of physical training um contrary to popular belief mm-hmm. uh because um for every shot you for almost every single shot you're giving a 100% force right so right. if your 100% is not a 100% on your next shot it's going to alter how far it goes which makes a huge difference mm-hmm. um so you a lot of our training was like sustenance training to kind of sustain your energy and burst of energy and then bring it back and then save it and then burst and then bring it back so it was um a lot of hiit training of uh, interval training yeah, yeah. um we did a lot of uh, plyo tire flip like indian runs like uh, oh. very high burst and high energy training but in short amount of time mm-hmm. um another thing is we carried our golf bags which was around 11 to 12 kilos of weight um and a golf course is approximately 8 kilometers to give you an idea um the total length of what we are walking for 5 hours mm-hmm. um so in co- tournament golf that would be around 16 kilometers because we would do 36 holes and carrying about 12 kilos plus 100% exertion on every shot that you're hitting and plus the mental game so it's a lot put into it we used to do mental training once a day uh workout once a day and yoga every other day seven days a week there's no day off oh. so uh, the stuff we see on tv like with the guy who's carrying the bag and like the small thing the carry i guess that's what they call it yeah yeah the carry so okay so probably in the amateur circuit and stuff they not there so okay. these are for club golfers people who do it for fun um who go over on the weekend or like business golfers there's a lot of people who actually do business meetings on the golf course so mm-hmm. they have the caddies and the luxuries are for them and also professionals get to have caddies because they can pay them um you know like they have to give them a percentage of their salary and those caddies are trained caddies also they are not just like people pick like they're very trained in the sport in what they have to do um and usually if a person like a professional has a caddy they're in it for the long run um mm-hmm. you will never see a professional switching caddies because um a caddy is like he has to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you so what you see on tv is usually just like the super cool professionals or the club fun golfers it's yeah. never us in between us <laughs> struggling to make it work but yeah oh okay so then that's like that's like 10x stuff man like having <laughs> the golf fit and walking so long wow yeah actually i have a lot of injuries <laughs> right um for anyone starting out what is the flow to make it to the top like to in india can you give us like a stuff in the golf circuit like Can you just play any tournament you want? So, if you're a kid starting out, I would suggest that um, you look at the zones. Mm-hmm. So you have the west zone, the east zone, north and south, and um, you get to play the zones. You can just give in your entry. You have to have a handicap. Uh, you get a handicap through your home club, and that's when you put in enough golf rounds where they kind of have a gauge on what you. as soon as you get a handicap you start for your zonals start playing some zonals um from the zonals you'll get to qualify to your national circuit mm-hmm. where they can then start playing the junior circuit on a national level through that they'll get to qualify through the through the higher level so the national level also has qualifiers for the main tournament um it's tougher for guys because honestly there's just more guys out there playing golf than mm-hmm. females so there's just more cutoffs but for girls just go to the zones and from zones get enough points and qualify to play um the nationals and that's the way to go mhm wonderful okay what about um 
here to cities and towns like uh, in india like do you think is there any progress happening in golf or just uh, limited to the metros um not aware what do you mean by tuning like uh, the smaller the smaller cities like let's say um bhubaneswar in orissa or you know something like a mangalore in karnataka so there's actually beautiful golf courses in mangalore and we played there so the national tour in india is really cool because it lets you go to these tier 2 cities and play on the golf courses mm-hmm. so like uh even places like jamshedpur which you would think would not have a golf course like the top two golfers professional golfers are from jamshedpur so mm-hmm. um yeah um in terms of facilities and coaches surely they're lacking but um, they like a lot of tier two cities in india have beautiful golf courses that are quite vacated um mm-hmm. like even uh, belgaum for example belgaum golf course is just gorgeous mm-hmm. uh but you will never see any i guess serious coaching happening mm-hmm. okay um let's go to the final segment where we're going to ask you random questions so um best golf venues you played in uh best golf venue so my favorite golf course in india is kga which is in bangalore um love it um in terms of beauty i would say story pines in san diego it still remains one of the most beautiful places um i played at and in terms of like a resorty golf course like ooty is really cool mm-hmm. because it's like super hilly and all the clouds come down and all the referees like ride on horses it's amazing mm-hmm. great um friendships in golf like um do you how do you like maintain friendships with your um competitors or is it always like you know an ice cold focus on winning and there's no socialization socializing no so one of my actually my best friend is a golfer we played junior golf together um she and me were actually in the second college that I transferred together we were roommates so no the fellow golfers are always at competition is not true i love her um she's um just great but yeah. i've made a lot of friends in golf and that's one of the things i just love about that sport is that you get to meet so many pe- people and so many different kinds of people all over the world mm-hmm. um so i i just all my friends are from golf i have no friends in pune it's really sad mhm <laughs> you can you can cut that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right um uh learning through youtube possible no okay straight no expenses what expenses do you have as a golfer um you have a lot of expenses starting from your car fuel driving to the golf course every day um okay you got that's coming at any to paying the club fees mm-hmm. uh to whatever club that you're going to be associated with to paying for the golf balls that you practice with to the golf clubs to your golf bag to any customizations that you may need for your swing because everyone's different um for your coach for any coaching to any additional practice equipment that you need to buy travel expenses food expenses stay expenses um the indian golf union expenses that you have to pay the union a certain fee yeah. to pay to play on the national tour um as you keep getting better you have to upgrade your clubs um get different things so clubs are the main expense mm-hmm. um just your golf clubs and figuring out then the golf balls because you keep losing them or they go bad and you have the tees you have golf clothes the equipment in general is the biggest expense mm-hmm. all right so um last question um anyone who wants to get started and uh, they don't want to spend too much can, can they go about it in any way is there any hacks through it like 
any way you can like just you know like people the assumption is like golf like you said is like an extremely expensive thing. so if people just i'm sure they want to you know get into the sport so is there any way they can go about it yeah for sure like you if you get started you can get started with the basics um you can get a basic golf club like because you don't really need um too much technical thing too many technical things to get a feel of the game um so starting off yeah sure like just take an old pair of golf clubs and you know buy some golf balls and start playing but if you want to get into it the expenses are going to rack up for somebody who um is talented um and is motivated and um is doing well in the sport despite the challenges that they are facing um mm-hmm. it 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 really makes me proud to say but the golfing community is is very um supportive of people like that so the top professionals in india uh, males right now in not just in india but also in asia were former caddies um so the club members actually supported their full journey um through amateur and junior golf and got them to where they were through just just sheer support and it's not just one person but many people pitching in to support and that happens till today wow. so that's one really good thing about our community is like if we see someone doing good and someone who's probably going to put us on the international map like aditi ashok did um they they definitely going to go out of their way to help out wow that's something that's not really there in many other sports in india it's All right, um, Raksha. It's been an honor. Thank you. It's Thank been you fun. Thank you so much for sharing so much of your um, experience and advice with us. Thanks. It was great. It was great talking to you, and I hope that I have maybe cleared some doubts for yes. whoever is listening to this. You definitely have, um, Raksha. Tell us about your new adventures. since you done with i mean since you retired <laughs> so I, i'm temporarily leaving the time i'm taking a small break but mm-hmm. um yeah i've been i i studied fashion in school i was always into fashion so my degree is actually in fashion merchandising and i got into it heavily after i moved back here it's something that i've always uh, been into and i started my company last year called the closet coach company um with the idea that people make trends trendy um and not the other way around um so i really think um in a sense that fashion has a lot to do with how people feel or express themselves so it's very psychological so my company was started with the idea to kind of delve into that psychology um of why you dress the way you dress why do you pick the colors you pick the silhouettes you pick what makes you comfortable what makes you feel good so um i really like people um generally and getting to know different kinds of mindsets and i really like clothing and kind of put that together um and i've been doing this for a year and slowly getting into designing um just figuring things out mm mm-hmm. so um tell us a bit more about uh, closet coach like um, what do you guys do exactly so we are stylists so uh, some of the services that i do offer is personal styling um i'm a wardrobe consultant um i also do um wedding styling and commercial styling for photo shoots um etc so on mm-hmm. um but a huge part of what we do is um kind of i creating a community feel or uh, and an open kind of discussion just for girls who enjoy fashion but i feel like pune was a little lacking in that sense uh, mumbai still has that kind of warmth and openness with um experimentation or different kind of clothes or colors like you see different trends happening in mumbai whereas pune is a little more uh flat because i feel like there hasn't been a platform and that's another thing that i also wanted to achieve with the styling um mm-hmm. is just giving a people a platform for expression so if someone sends me a style saying hey, hey i really like this like it 
this is amazing like i feel great because like it's just opening just conversations and breaking barriers so that's another thing right. so this i'm um, uh, assuming is not just for models oh yeah yeah no no my styling is like for everybody and like it's crazy because when i started this company i thought i would primarily cater to a certain age group and a certain type of woman and then it happened so that in the first few months i had worked with someone who was 17 as well as someone who was 55 and the experience was so different mm -hmm. and like the what they were doing in life was so different and vast and it was great because that's why i started this in the first place because i wanted it to be all encompassing and everyone um should feel like this is their place to express themselves like um so it was definitely not for a certain kind of woman but more for everybody wonderful so um raksha where can we find you like please share your um insta and your email with us so the listeners can find you if they want help or want to get in touch with you for any reason for sure so my personal insta is raksha fadke it's r a k s h a p h a d k e Mm -hmm. and my work handle is um at the rate the closet coach co by raksha um better than me spelling it out <laughs> i think we should attach it to the yeah. video <laughs> mm mm-hmm. i'll do that yeah and your email as well sorry i didn't email. catch that email my email it's raksha dot s dot fadke p h a d k e at gmail dot com. Wonderful. So we'll attach them at the show notes as well. Um, so yeah, thanks, Raksha. Um, we hope to have you here with us for future episodes if we want to discuss something related to golf. Sounds great. It's been great talking to you. Thank you. Take care. Take care.